each other together and you know just held on for dear life and then the next thing we know the cellar door starts kind of tapping and the next thing boom it's gone I could hear the destruction. I could hear everything being torn up, glass broken. Uh, I looked up into the, through the, where the door was, and you could see straight up inside of it. I could see debris flying around. But actually to see one go over you and actually look up inside of it, it gave me a sight that I'll never forget in my life. One of the most peculiar things about tornadoes is the narrowness of their paths of destruction. This one went through Oklahoma City like a bulldozer, leaving everything intact on both sides. But on its trajectory, killing 41 people, injuring hundreds, and creating a billion dollars worth of damage. Scott and Susan Carlin lost everything. We, you know, walked out of this cellar and it's just like everything's gone. You know, everything that we've had for 10 years of being married was trashed. It's, it's like, you know, it's just so hard to... Please hear me say Tornadoes are as freakish as they are cruel. Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas are where a third of all American tornadoes are born. Close to Earth, moist breezes off the Gulf of Mexico sweep towards Canada. And very high up, the jet stream barrels down from northwest Canada. Sandwiched between is a layer of dry, warm air from the southwestern deserts. The sun heats the ground and evaporates the water from the gulf breezes, creating thunderclouds. They rise until they hit a ceiling known as a lid, which keeps the thunderclouds from rising further. But sometimes the clouds build up so much that they burst through the lid, right into the path of the icy jet stream. This is what puts the twist in the twister. At the bottom, the clouds are blowing one way, and at the top, the other. From the ground, you see what's known as a supercell with a fast spinning center. The spinning lowers the air pressure, sending the supercell's twisting center down from the thundercloud until it touches down. And that's when the trouble starts. That's a tornado. Tornadoes look like they're destroying things by sucking them up, but what they really do is just batter with sheer wind power. And once an object is in the air, it can be lifted into the vortex. It can also be turned into a missile. Lots of otherwise unscathed buildings come out looking like pincushions. A lot of damage could be prevented if houses could be built to withstand the things that tornadoes hurl at them. So engineers at Texas Tech University's Institute for Disaster Research are firing planks at walls. They use a compressed air cannon and the planks hit pieces of wall at 100 miles an hour. What they've discovered is that walls of wood, brick, and concrete block are all easily punctured. Only reinforced steel deflects the planks. Other disaster scientists are working on better early warning systems. This is Doppler radar, moving radar from moving targets.
if we waited for tornadoes to come to us with a stationary radar, we would get very old waiting for that to happen because they're very, very rare. So what we do is we take the radar to the weather instead of waiting for the weather to come to us. The system works using the Doppler effect, the phenomenon that makes the siren of an approaching ambulance sound different from one that's going away. All radar is based on echoes. In this case, the echo off a raindrop. Add Doppler and you can tell which way the raindrop is going. And if drops close together are going in different directions, their cloud must be twisting. With different colors depicting the rain's direction and different shades showing wind strength, scientists are able to track emerging storms. With a Doppler radar, we can map out the wind speed in the tornado or in a thunderstorm. So we can get a three-dimensional image of how the winds are moving different places in the storm. By knowing those three-dimensional winds, we hope we can understand how the tornadoes form, how some get very strong and some stay very weak, and how they die. We had the Doppler on wheels very, very close to the Oklahoma City tornado when it was very near its peak strength. And we observed winds that were over 300 miles an hour, perhaps 500 kilometers per hour. And that was the highest that anybody has ever directly observed with a radar or on the surface. That doesn't mean that that tornado was stronger than any other tornado. It's just that we were the first ones to get that close and measure the tornado with that much detail. There goes the vortex team in front of us. There is a large, violent tornado on the ground. As with all weather, we can't stop it or divert it. But there is one extreme weather that's welcomed. Monsoon winds bring the world's heaviest rain. There are monsoons in Africa and all over southern Asia. But the Indian monsoons are the biggest. They start with an extreme absence of rain. Summer approaches and India bakes in the sun. Everything south of the Himalayas is dust dry, sweltering under a rising plume of heat. Because that air is rising, there's got to be something coming in to replace it and you get the cool breeze blowing over the sea. That sea breeze effect brings in moisture-laden clouds from the ocean and that brings the wet season that we associate the monsoon with. Saturated clouds sail in from the ocean and over the coastal mountains. They settle in the low pressure left by the rising heat and let loose. Unlike other extremes of weather, the monsoons are predictable. If you're in India and you're soaked, it must be summer. Life isn't easy during the season of the world's hardest rain, but it does make the crops grow. The catastrophe, in fact, is the occasional year when the monsoons don't come. Eventually, the monsoon winds carry the clouds to the slopes of the Himalayas, where they stop until they're all rained out. This is often the wettest place on Earth, the hill town of Cherapunji. Its yearly average is 36 feet, the height of a two-story house. Sometimes it's as much as 75 feet. That's almost five stories. Often the mountain rivers burst their banks. And all the monsoon rain that didn't fall in the lowlands now comes to them as flood water. And it really is as high as a house. You might be able to predict when a monsoon will come, but how much rain it will bring.